Did you pull for Akko and then you realize you didn't really know what to do with her after you unlocked her live 2D? Well then, this is the video for you. My guys, I'm gonna show you how to curb stomp the hardest bosses and the hardest content in the game for now. And the things you learn in this video should generally speaking be repeatable for most of the bosses bar a couple of specific nuances like boss mechanics. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace. This is a blue archive video. And I know, I know it kind of looks like a video, a video within a video, video reception. However, just remember that I am a freaking boomer and I can't talk whilst I run raids, okay? And so my guys, we already know why we're here today. We are going to tear Hiero apart and hopefully use the same learnings to tear everybody else apart as well. So to kick things off, I want to show you guys the comp. And generally speaking, the hyper carry comp is going to look like this. We've got the Akane for her EX skill cost 2 for defense down. We've got a hyper carry. In this case, it's going to be Azusa. And I'm going to be borrowing this fat, juicy Azusa. I'll show you guys it later. It's so freaking juicy. We've got the swimsuit Azusa. She is going to be providing more defense down with her sub skill. And then a Koharu on the end. Generally speaking, Koharu is going to be required because there is a little bit of healing that we need. But yeah, generally speaking, as you can see, the whole team or the strikers at least right now, they are all going to be enabling the Azusa. They are going to be helping her survive. They're going to be helping her do a giga damage. Now, moving down to the specials down here, you can see it's Akko. And then right next to Akko, this time we've got Serena. Now, Serena is coming this time because we are fighting Hiero, who has this whole like heal mechanic thing. But my guys, if it wasn't Serena, then you could be taking your Karin or you could be taking your Kotama. Again, all to juice up the Azusa. Now, what's going to happen next is that I'm going to quickly go through each of the characters. So, uh, here's my Koharu first. Yes? No? Okay, we're going to show you the Azusa first. Now, this is a UE30 Azusa, I think, or UE40. Because as you can see, we've got the smiley face without the sunglasses. Now, we're looking for an Azusa with the smiley face with the sunglasses. Yeah, you see that one over there? Okay, no sunglasses there. And boom, we've got sunglasses over here. That means that she is going to be doing 10% extra damage to the boss. Hopefully, you guys have a whale to leech off of in your clan. Uh, if not, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> but that is kind of the idea. If you have Aqua, if you have everyone else, you can kind of just like borrow somebody's juiced out hyper carry. For Bina, it would be Maki. For the Peroro, it would be Arisu, and so on and so forth. So let's keep it moving. All right, so that is our Koharu. My Koharu is just going to be max EX and these kinds of skills. I'm uh, just going to run through it real quick. So Koharu and then Akane, 3, 1, 1, 1. Ideally, this would be an EX skill of 5. I do believe we get a little bit more of the um, defense down. And then for the last of the strikers, we have the Swimsuit Azusa. As you can see, the sub skill is maxed out for the maximum defense down. All right, and so next, I've got the Aqua over here. Max, 9, 9, max. The healing is pretty decent. You could go for the max, but generally, I want to like save those books for the DPS units. And then on this side, specific to Hiero, I've got the Serena with the max EX skill and 7-7. Seven, seven. Only at 2 stars and it actually works. And as you notice, my Aqua is also at 3 stars. <laughs> yeah, it works guys. Trust me. And so let's get into a run itself. And I think a lot of you know by now, but essentially the goal of Hiero, the sub mechanic here is that we want to heal this pole because if we heal the pole to full, it's going to apply more defense down to this uh, creature looking scary thing. It's actually like my second favorite boss. And so what that means is that in the rotation, I will be throwing in a lot of heals. That is specific to this boss. Generally speaking, you're probably just going to be like sustaining your own units in some other bosses like Bina, etc. Or sometimes you could actually get away with not having any heals. But yeah, this time we have to actually do heals. So we've got a heal going in from Koharu. I'm going to be like actually essentially spamming everything because your hyper carry window is really, really short, right? So I'm going to chuck this heal onto the lantern. But okay, and then we've got the Koharu as well going in, going in, going in. I'm just waiting because this guy does a lot of chip damage. So if I wait till the last moment, I might be able to catch a little bit of extra damage. However, the hyper carry aspect is about to come up because you can see the Akko is up over here. We've got the Akane. So Akko over here, she is going to use the Sagata Mortis, which is going to be the defense down. And then immediately after Akko, we're going to use Akane and then we're going to see and check that we have all of the available defense downs. We're going to see and check that we have all of the available buffs and then fire off the Azusa ult. So that's exactly what I do. Boom, boom. And then Azusa, see, look at that. She has, well, the boss has the three defense down. She has the two and the three, which is the Akko buff, as well as the her normal buffs. And then from here, she is going to let off the juicer, which is uh, pretty freaking fantastic damage. I don't think that one critted, but it's okay. And essentially, it's a rinse and repeat. That is the hyper carry meta. Uh, you could actually just theoretically stop watching at this point. But the really important thing 
is the whole Akko into Akane into the three defense downs straight into your hyper carries EX skill. So to quickly show you guys again, that is just going to be like dealing with the Hiero mechanic. So Akko into Akane into Azusa. Check before we use the Azusa that there is three stacks of the defense down from S Azusa, from Akane, and from normal Azusa's skill one. And from here, it's actually really freaking gravy. I legit just do the same thing. I kind of like manage heals. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm really, really wanting to wait until the last moment because as you can see, that debuff, it freaking disappeared, right? And that means that I could get more heals onto that lantern. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I think you're about to see me do the juice again. As you saw, Akko, Akane, into, okay, hopefully I was checking for the times three, but that is essentially the rotation. Now, let's just let this play out because I want to show you guys the ending, which is actually just absolutely nuts, right? Sagata Mortis, that tells me that it's it's freaking hyper carry time. <laughs> and so here we are going into stage two. By and large, we can kind of like ignore the mechanics of the stage. Like we can ignore this red lantern over here. And I think you're going to find that that is going to be consistent with a lot of the other bosses in, uh, okay, maybe not the, maybe not the, the ball guy where you have to clear all the waves, but like every other one, right? So here we've got the heal going into the lantern. I want to drop it on the lantern, the heal on the lantern, and we are going to get five stacks. This is going to be the Giga Juicer. My, uh, my other son is kind of looking a little bit dead, but that's okay. We're doing the hyper carry thing. I almost forgot the Aqua buff. And then we got the heal. Oh, last second heal. Holy crap. That was kind of lucky, man. So we check here because it's been quite a long duration, right? Since we did all of that panic mechanics. At this point, we still have the three times defense down and we have the two and the three buff on Azusa. Now, the reason why it's so important to look at the two and three times on Azusa or whoever your hyper carry is, is because Akko's buff duration is incredibly short, which is why like I spam it all at once, right? And then we got the Azusa, bada bada bing, and that is gonna do the big juice. And essentially, this guy is smoked. My endings are always like kind of really iffy, right? I always like throw a Kotama bomb to finish them off. I don't know why. It just so happens that like as they are at low HP, my Kotama is up. It's the only like real damage dealing one. So I throw a freaking grenade at them. However, what I really want to show you guys is this juice over here. 13966. I'm pretty sure that's better than like my current one right now. But look at this. <laughs> look at that. My well, guys, Azusa alone dealt 5.1 million damage. That's not 510k, that's 5.1 million. And so as you can see, everybody else is kind of like not really doing excessive amounts of damage. So what that means is that like, for example, your S Azusa, she could be like, um, what is it? The skill two or skill three, you could, no, the skill one or skill two, you could leave them low considering she's not even doing that much damage. However, as we all know, every little bit counts, but it's this kind of rationale that's led me to think like, oh, Koharu Akane, so if I come over back over here, you can see my Koharu only has a level 4 enhanced skill. It gives attack. She doesn't really do attack, so I don't really need to level it. And I use the same kind of thinking for the Akane over here. Generally speaking, she's not going to do anything, so I don't need any of her skills aside from the real purpose as to why she's there. The EX skill with the defense down. And so my guys, hopefully that gave you a pretty good taste in terms of like the hyper carry meta. I probably should have made this video like pretty early on when Akko got released. I think that was with the Bina raid and we had like the Maki and stuff. But yeah, my guys, that's essentially it. Uh, the rest of the footage is just a lot of blunders where I kind of just mess up the mechanics a bit. But generally speaking, it is the same methodology every single time. However, my guys, with that, I think that is going to bring us to the end of the video. Hopefully this is a pretty short one because there really isn't much to tell. If you wanted to TLDR this video, it's use Akko, use Akko, and use your hyper carry skill pretty much like almost simultaneously and make sure that you have three defense down buffs before you actually fire it off. Yeah, that's actually kind of it. Oh, but if you aren't using like the Serena, then you could be using the Kotama. However, my guys, that is going to bring us to the true end of the video. And so I want to leave you guys with a secret question. And that is, have you guys been using Akko essentially the way that I have already been? Or did this video actually kind of help? My guys, let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving a comment, I would really appreciate that. So thank you guys so much. If you did enjoy this video or found it kind of helpful, then please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel and turning on that notification bell. However, as, uh, as your boy Hiero once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.